first time I've ever attempted to use it, so it's all new to me. Next time around, it'll work fine. So, um, if I mute it, would it mute me? Yes, it would. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're going to keep going here. Because I think Wade Keller's on there, right, Wade? And maybe Dave Hyland. I know I'll talk to him. Hi, buddy. You remember James Barker from purchasing on 747? He's here. So, uh, anyway, I'm going to go ahead here. What I start with, I'm going to run through the slides about our business first, and then I'll talk about the technologies of where this is and what we're doing with it. So, so first of all, um, the business plan, we had a small upset. Dr. Hyland, um, who invented this in his own dream, here's how it all came about, okay? I wrote a book of aerospace engineering, and, uh, and it was published in, a, in the International Journal of Defense Management aerospace and defense management. And from that, they asked me to host the International Aerospace and, De and Engineering Conference. So I did this like almost five years ago and I met Dr. Hyland. And Dr. Hyland was, was a dean of aerospace for engineering at the, at the University of Michigan. And then he, re he retired from there, went to Texas A&M, did almost the same thing. But when we met, I was talking about energy from space, okay, or space based solar power. And so he didn't hear much about it, right? So I laid I laid on a ton of information. Um, Bush actually did a uh, a study after 9-11 and then they were at war. He said the Defense Department came up with a study saying a war without oil. And the outcome of, and there was 113 consultants and engineers and leaders from around the country doing this uh, entire report. Well, the outcome of that entire war without oil, uh, whoever has, can contain and have the most energy and the ability to produce, wins the war, no matter what. So if you run out of energy to ability to produce, we lose the war. So, the only thing, if, if, if OPEC, remember back in the 70s, when they cut us off, we, we kind of starved, right, this country. So, now we're doing better, but we don't want to go into our reserves too much. So he said, okay, space, okay, what about the space solar power? Because in the 60s, NASA said, we could do this. Well, it didn't become affordable and capable until just recently. Okay, and John Mankins did a, wrote a book that our Congressman Dana Rohrabacher had, NASA, he actually walked it through NASA and gave him $5 million to do a book which is called The Case for Space-Based Solar Power. So I have that book. And you'll have a link to it. You can always read it and refer back to it. Fantastic five, six hundred page uh, book that should be used in universities to learn about it. So, anyway, so Dr. Hyland learned all this stuff about space solar power and he thought, and he remembers that the first satellite that NASA ever did after Sputnik went up, which is this little tiny little guy with antennas coming out, well, when that went up in 1950, they say it started in 57, but it was up there doing its work in 59. Well, in 60, we launched the Echo, which is what this is based off, the model of. And it's just, a, it's this huge, I don't know, it's a 30, 30, 30 or 100 meter, it's about a 30 meter balloon. You'll see a picture of it soon. Anyway, that was superior to the Sputnik because of the size of it. So bouncing, using that for communications in low Earth orbit worked great. So, so Dr. Hyland, in a dream, came up with this way of making a material that could both absorb energy, convert it to DC, and then have a, another layer that had the PCB or printed circuit board that could convert it to a to a certain megawatt. And then we put we we put patch antennas on it, and that would allow us to transmit the energy retrodirectively back and forth. Okay, so. So he came up with that way, okay, let's do that. So he pursued that, and then he came up with a patent, and his patent included the solar microwave fabric. Hey, Alex Jones, how you doing, Rocket Man? Please help yourself. Okay, I, I always have to give kudos to my buddy Rocket Man here. So, so anyway, so that's where this all came from, and that was, uh, I, we started this about three years ago. I did team meetings. He just re retired at the end of last year. Dr. Werbos just retired a year earlier, and he's got, you know, his health wasn't good. So anyway, it's now finally time, okay? And 
this is perfect timing. Everything, all the balls are in our corner. We have a good president that'll push this and make it work for the right thing, which he already said wouldn't matter material, right? So now here we are. So the business plan. I had a hiccup because I don't have much help on it. That'll be done in two weeks. The NDA, before you leave today, make sure I get your email, your phone number, and uh, so that way I can definitely send you a USB with all the science in here, a business plan, and, and everything you need to know of exactly this project. So that way you can go back and reference it and keep you spooled up. Um, as for the, so that's why I need the NDA. The next step is, uh, is get a building. Next week I'm looking at new buildings. We really need a minimum of 25,000 square feet of office space, but we also have to have, we have to have clean rooms and laboratories, which fortunately, my buddy here, David Tucker, can help us with that because he's done this before. Jay, you know how clean rooms work and stuff. I mean, a lot of us people know how to do it. So, so we have to have clean rooms separately for the fabric that we make, the solar cells that we print, the patch antennas we print, and the PCBs, and it all gets put together on a roll-to-roll -roll process, so it might be an over and under system, whatever we do. The goal here is to mass produce the mass production system to make this material. That's our goal. So that way, we make the machines to make the material, and we put that everywhere in the world that we have the biggest market for it. Okay? So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the big picture of what we're doing with this business. Okay, and then I'm going to show you a basic, just like you've seen on a website, I'll blast through them. You're going to see the basic products and then what we're going to grow into. And now you'll see the financing and hiring plans. The cool thing about the hiring plans, I want to talk to you right now. The hiring plans is, I believe, as hiring a bunch of people to do a bunch of projects in my last, in my life, that you bring somebody in and do a 90-day they test you, you test them, and you decide the price. You, here's how I'm going to price all the people that work for us. You go to NASA's website, and you go to Boeing and Lockheed, and find out, the, based on your experience and your knowledge and education, where you are, and take the top level, and then add 10%. We pay 10% more than the best in the whole country. Okay? That's fair. Now, in the 90 days, evaluate each other. And it wouldn't just be me versus you, it'd be everyone in the team. So, and I, you know, everyone should be able to bring up their, how much they make, as quick as they want, any way they want to. Now, and I also believe in paying people in gold. So, you'll get a normal paycheck, and I still insist that people do at least 10 or 20% of their paycheck in gold. Which I give you a certificate in gold, and that's what it is. I'm not going to be handing out coins all the time because I'm not. <laughs> but I believe everyone should have gold. Just carry it with you and shove it in the back as an extra money, you know. So, and then if you want it, so, so here's your hiring options. I believe in a 90-day trial for both people, both the company and my, and yourselves, because I go into a place super cheap and I'm worth a hell of a lot more than that typically. So, it's good to get a fair balance and a fair evaluation. The other thing is, if you wanted to do a 1090 days, nine, say you wanted to write this stuff off as a business. Or you wanted to do a W-2 through a contract, you could use my buddy at Chip and Ross. You could do contract W-2, you can do 1099s, make sure you, you have to add that extra 30% for taxes. So you get paid a lot more, but you still have to cover yourself. So we will pay you, no doubt about it, and very, very well. So it's always, a, and if you have a corporation, you know how to do your write-offs, then that's, any, that's a good way to go. I believe in the freedom of the employee to be happy with how much they get paid. If they go sniffling for 5% raise or 10% or whatever, that's, that's old school crap. That's, that's not how business should work. The goal is, is to be happy with what you're paid and you know you're worth it and you're getting paid what you're worth. Right? Do we all agree? Simple yeah. practice. Here's what I did on an electric car. I put packages together. People quoted on it. They were typically 20, 25,000 for the package. And I actually gave them all the equipment and their office space. They just contractually did it. And at the end of what they did, I, and we checked their quality of their work, that they met the statement of work. And then they got transmitted at least on an average. Everyone got like 
They did it in like one week to 10 days. I was there for two weeks. Everyone got at least 25 grand for that less than two weeks of work. Now that's, I'd like to do that with this stuff too, but the statement of work has to be there first, which we don't have, which means I need systems engineering to do it. So, so that's a different subject. So, but I do want to get to the point where it's, you're paid by the package or paid for the work. If you get it done early, you get paid more. You know, you earn it. So, so that's what I believe in, in doing, getting paid properly. So, so I'm not going to talk about that anymore, that uh, hiring stuff. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I just want to you to know, everyone wants to get paid well here, and I believe that everyone should be, and that's, that's it. So, financing, uh, we, I'm not going to just do that one person, that very well from the U.S. Bank. I believe in sharing other VCs, because it's such a big project. I want to have at least seven venture capitalists involved with this, and the reason being, I don't want people pushing us around. Let them push each other around trying to steal each other's percentages. I don't want them to mess with us. We don't always control more than 50%, no matter what. Until this thing is working and sellable, then we'll go for an IPO later, you know, seven years or whatever down the line, so. And then uh, understanding, so this is our business here, one through four. The other one is my presentation of understanding energy from space, okay? So, let me move along. So, here's me, who, those who don't know me, I've been around a while, I've done a lot, worked at a lot of companies. So, <laughs> you can look at that later. If you don't believe my credibility, work with me. You'll see it. So, um, anyway, like I said, business plan will be done in two weeks. NDA is on the table. Um, I will provide you USBs, up-to-date good ones, so that way you can get educated as much as possible. There's more in there than you could ever probably learn in a year, because there's more in there. There's so many videos, just the video time alone would take you that long, probably. <laughs> but I believe in giving everyone access to everything. Eventually, we'll have an education thing with people higher up. So, and then, are you, are you, uh, you got a cable for power, Joseph? No, that's good. I have two hours, three hours. Oh, wow. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, we're, we're videotaping, so I can throw this up on the internet with, with this slide.